What's up everyone, it's Nija and you're now tuned in to Our Music Is Ours. Today, for our first ever episode of a series of podcasts called Artist Squad, we're going to be talking about none other than Normani. Now, at this point, I feel like she's garnered enough notoriety that her name should ring bells. When I said her name, you know, bells should be going off and you should be ready to answer the door or the phone because you know exactly who this is. But if for whatever reason you're unfamiliar with her, no worries because I'm going to give you, you know, some education on who this young woman is, aka a little context. So Normani was born in Atlanta, but she grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana. She took interest in the arts at a very young age. She was enrolled in dance and gymnastics at the ages of three and four, respectively. Um, she, you know, dealt with her fair share of traumas throughout her childhood. So first, when she was five years old, her mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. But fortunately, due to early detection, her mom has been cancer free for many years now. So breast cancer awareness has become a very important part of her brand. She's always, you know, kind of engaging in activities and partnering with organizations um, that are all about just spreading awareness about breast cancer because of, you know, what happened to her when she was young. So not only did she have to deal with that at, you know, five years old, but, you know, a few years later, she was a victim of Hurricane Katrina. And so like many people who were living in New Orleans at the time, she and her family, they had to, you know, pick up you know, what was left of their lives there and go, you know, somewhere totally different. And so her parents, they gave her the option to choose where they would go. Um, The choices were Houston or Dallas, and they let Normani decide where they would go. And she chose Houston, which I think is going to be a famous part of her story, um, because that's where her idol, Beyonce Giselle Nose Carter, is from. So she spent the rest of her young adulthood pre-fame living in Houston and that's where she auditioned to auditioned for X Factor from um she auditioned in 2012 um was eliminated and then they brought her back as well as um a few other girls and they brought them back and those girls would come together to later form Fifth Harmony So Fifth Harmony, as a group, they didn't win the competition, but they ended up getting signed by Epic Records with L.A. Reid and Sylvia Rohn. And um, the group, you know, wasn't a majorly successful group. Um, They, you know, they had, you know, some success for sure. Work From Home is their highest charting song. That was number four on the charts. Um, You know, I kind of see them as being the successors of Danity Kane and that they're this multiracial group with women of, you know, different... Um, racial backgrounds, ethnicities, and whatnot, who kind of come together to form this super group. And so, how I kind of see them being in the same line, but, you know, they definitely wasn't, I don't know, I, I don't know if I should say they weren't as successful as Danny became. So, I don't know if it's fair to say that they weren't as successful as Danity Kane because, you know, they were a successful group, especially for the time that they made their debut. I just think that they experienced success differently. So Danity Kane had number one albums with Harmony didn't, but they did have high charting songs and they were able to ch- uh, to tour a lot more than Danity Kane did, um, especially in international markets. So I feel like they definitely had a lot more international success than I believe Danity Kane did. Um, So, you know, both successful groups just, you know, experience differently. Um, So despite the group's success, Normani's experience within the group, you know, wasn't all that great. She found herself um, a number of times, you know, a victim of just intense racism by, you know, people who were fans of everyone except for her. Um, So, you know, that did a number on her psyche and her, you know, sense of self and confidence. And so it was something that she struggled with. And in January, in her Billboard cover story, she talks about how um, she was the only member a part of the group who was delegated solely background vocals for a song and she was just talking about how hurt she felt just being so underutilized and so Normani's time within the group you know it it wasn't all that great for her you know because she didn't get a lot of you know shine she didn't get a lot of moments to show you know how talented she really was it was kind of up for the fans to be able to kind of like you know just kind of gleam a bit of a diamond you know 
from what little, you know, parts that they kind of allowed her to have. And so her skills, you know, greatly diminished because she was underutilized and she was also a part of a group where the other girls couldn't dance as well as she could. So she had to kind of dumb her skills down for the sake of uniformity. Um, you know, um, once the girls split, she went on to participate on, on Dancing with the Stars. Um, and, you know, she that really gave her the opportunity to show who she was. So people got to s- learn about her story, learn about, you know, her the struggles that she dealt with, you know, having a mom, dealing with breast cancer and being a victim of Hurricane Katrina. And people got to see how supportive her grandmother has always been of her, you know. Um, please don't underestimate the importance of having a praying black grandma. <laughs> Because I think Normani is definitely a testimony to that. Um, It's so funny because she was on Ellen one time with her Dancing with the Stars partner, Val. And her grandma was in the audience and Ellen asked her grandma, she was like, Oh, I bet you could never believe that, you know, your granddaughter would be here. And her her grandmother was like, Oh, trust me, I believe it. You know, I always knew that this was possible. So I think that that just speaks to just how much faith her family has always had in her. Um, so she ended up not winning Dancing with the Stars, but, you know, that that didn't stop anything for her um, because, you know, shortly after that, she ended up signing with Brandon Silverstein and his S10 Entertainment, which currently functions in partnership with Rock Nation. She also signed to Tunji Balogan, his Keep Cool imprint on RCA Records, and she is their flagship artist. She's the first ever artist signed there. Um, and that label is home to a lot of other up-and-coming black artists like um, Lucky Day and Van Jess. And so I'm really excited to see what becomes of that label. And, you know, she released Love Lies with Khalid, and that was her first ever single. And, you know, it peaked at, I want to say, number nine on the charts, maybe number eight. It was for sure a number one on pop radio um for I want to say at least two weeks or so so it was a pretty successful record one of the most successful R&B records released in 2018 um so that was a huge you know moment for her and she played a big role in its success despite what people want to say people will say that she's you know relying on others to find success but you know Um, Her performance at the Billboard Music Awards in 2018 did a number for that song. You know, the song was on its way out of the charts and she brung it back, you know, with her show-stopping performance that just caught the eye of so many people. She's currently experiencing similar success with the record that she has with Sam Smith called Dancing with the Strangers. It's currently at number eight, but expected to um, go back up next week, hopefully. Um, And so, you know, I think she's, you know, showing time and time again that she is here to stay with some of the records that, you know, she's been releasing and the success that she's been having because we really haven't seen a lot of um, young black pop stars you know charting high on the billboard hot 100 so um i think normani shows us you know she gives us a lot of hope in the future and what you know could possibly come of her of her career as well as for the future of music If there's one issue that Normani's experiencing, it's that her um, solo music hasn't, you know, done, you know, as well as she may have liked for it to. Um, And when I say solo music, I'm talking about the songs where, you know, she's the lead and she has a feature, which at this point, it's just one song. And that's Waves um, featuring Black, which I thought it was a really great record, but apparently a lot of people weren't feeling it for whatever reason, but I I really think that it is a good song, and I think that it had a lot of potential um, as, you know, um, you know, kind of a new wave R&B song. I think it had a lot of potential. It was very futuristic, kind of gave me some Brandy, some Aaliyah vibes, early 2000s, late 90s for sure, Um, you know, but unfortunately it didn't really experience a lot of success, and I think it may have been because her team um, decided to focus on the Sam Smith collaboration and, you know, allow that to take precedence over her solo single, you know, Um, And of course, you know, she's had a few other, you know, solo songs, Um, her Calvin Harris EP, it was two song track, she had um, 
two songs on there, Checklist and Slow Down, um, t- which were also really cool songs. I think Checklist is, you know, it's that girl. I really like that song. <laughs> but again, none of those songs, you know, were, were hugely, success- hugely successful, but, you know, it's fine because they didn't really push it. It was just kind of for her to have music out there, for her to have stuff to perform. She needed, you know, material to perform at the title performance. And, you know, now she's on tour with Ariana Grande and she needs material to perform. So um, I think they just put that out just to put it out but you know I think it would have been nice for them to put out you know maybe another EP so she just had you know even more material to perform and you know it kind of allows her it would have allowed her to kind of do a test run before the album comes out and you know it's not too late for them to do that like it's still they still have time to do that if you know they don't think they've you know positioned her to have success with her album they can put out an EP right now and you know just do a test run so that they know what to do when it's time to you know release her debut album um but those are you know just some of the thoughts that i had or that i have so now that i've provided you with some context we are going to get into the swat analysis so if you are not familiar with what a swat is a swat is an analysis used very commonly in the business world um i would describe it as kind of being the first line of defense when a business is is experiencing some sort of problem. Um, this is going to be one of the tools that a consultant or whoever, you know, would use first to be able to figure out, well, how can we kind of deal with this issue based on, you know, the business's standing. And so kind of SWOT is kind of like a self analysis, um, or you know, rather an analysis of a business, but I'm going to put this to work to analyze artists, um, specifically up and comers as well, up and comers as well as um, maybe artists who just did, weren't as successful as they could have been, um, to analyze you know why this was and what were some of the things that they missed and what are some of the things that they you know could have done in order to experience more success. So. Now that I've, you know, given you a little description of what a SWAT is, SWAT stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. So we are going to start with Normani's strengths because I feel like that's, you know, her largest quadrant. She has more strengths than she has, you know, anything else, which is a good thing. That's a beautiful thing that she is in that predicament. Um, But her first strength for sure is going to be her performance skills. Normani is an amazing performer. She's, you know, gotten rave reviews on Ariana Sweetener tour, so much so that, you know, it almost feels like she's kind of on her own show because she's just that great. People are coming to see her. People are, you know, willing to buy a ticket just to see um, this young woman perform. So yeah, great performer. Her billboard performance is kind of what started to you know make her a name to know essentially because people were just so blown away they want to know who was that girl with Khalid um her title performance was one of the most talked about performances of that night her performance of waves on Jimmy Fallon um Questlove he described it as being one of the best debuts that he had ever seen because it was just that good like she you know is just that good (laughs) So Normani, she's going to be one of those artists who really elevates their music through performance. So you might not like the studio version of a song, but you might want to wait to see her perform it live because she may just change your mind about it. Um, very much like Beyonce. Like, I, you know, we don't always like the album. We don't always like the songs on the album, but when we see it live, you know, we feel differently about it. And so I feel like with artists like that the music almost becomes secondary because it's really just you know a means to an end it's just material for her to perform and so um along with you know her being a strong performer she really benefits because there are no other girls who can do what she does like in terms of contemporaries um in her age range and genre bracket um there's no one who is competing with her there's no one who's even trying like can you name one girl who's dancing and singing Can you name one girl who's even trying to do either of those two things at the same time? Okay, so there's no one. (laughs) And what's so great about Normani is that even though, you know, she has the skills where she could literally just, she could just perform and like, just be that great. Um, But 
you know, and do the bare minimum essentially, but she doesn't, you know, every single op- performance opportunity she gets, she's, you know, knocking it out of the par. Like she's going above and beyond. She's, you know, giving a thousand percent when she could just give a hundred, you know, a hundred is good enough, but she's giving you a thousand, she's giving you 10,000. And so she's, you know, utilizing a strategy that I like to call the no money left on the table and that, you know, she's just taking full advantage of every single opportunity. And that's what you should be doing. Like, that's what artists should be doing. You know, up and comers should be taking advantage of every single opportunity, not taking it for granted. And she's doing that, you know, and it shows. So I think that's so amazing. Um, One of Normani's other strengths is that she is the flagship artist on her label. She is their first signee. Um, She is the artist who they're all banking on to be this massive pop star. So that means that they're pouring all these resources into her, um, you know, in hopes for her success because their success is contingent on her. Like if she doesn't succeed, they don't succeed. If she doesn't make money, they're not going to make money. And that's the, the same deal with her label. She's one of two artists that they manage and um, the other artist that Brandon, her manager, manages, Jacob Banks, he, you know, I don't know that he necessarily intends on being this, you know, international superstar. So, again, she's, you know, that kind of allows for them to put their primary focus on her and to, you know, just kind of give her all their energy because she needs it because she wants to be this pop star. And both her label and her management company, they're backed by bigger companies. So she gets the advantage of having a small team that is focused on her, but they're backed with, you know, bigger machines with more money and more resources that they can quickly, you know, utilize and put into motion. So I think that she's, you know, in a good position with regards to that. And number three. In terms of her strengths, I would say um, it would be her alto vocal capabilities. So Normani, she has, you know, a wide range. I know that there's some people out there who will say that she can't sing, but she can. (laughs) And she has pretty good range. And I think specifically her alto vocal abilities is what really makes her stand out. Um, She doesn't really showcase them all that all that much but on the record that she did with Quavo Swing she was you know serving us some Anita Baker some Tony Braxton some husky deep vocals and I feel like that's something that she can use that would really differentiate her from all the rest because you know all the rest of the girls are just singing soprano and she's you know kind of giving us some alto so that's you know a huge um, factor that she can use to differentiate herself from the rest. So now that we've talked about her strengths, let's talk about her opportunities that she has. So one, with her being such a great performer, um, it just makes sense to get her as many performance opportunities as um, her team can. And so that's something that I really want to see from them. It's unfortunate that she wasn't able to perform Dancing with a Stranger at the Billboard Music Awards this year because she would have really crushed it. It would have been another opportunity for her to elevate herself and elevate her name and notoriety. Um, But unfortunately, she wasn't able to do that. So I think that her team, when it's time for the album rollout, they need to have her on the performance circuit. She should be at every single music awards, every, you know, single morning show, every single talk show, um, performing, you know, and killing it, you know, because that is her bread and butter. That's what makes her such a standout. So they need to get her, you know, on every, every performance slot that they can. Um, Beyond that, I feel like we also need to see more multimedia content from her. So Normani, thus far, she's done a lot of like print or digital print interviews. So if you want to know about who this woman is, you got to read, you know, and people don't like to read. So, you know, there should just be an easier way for people to get to know who she is. Like there should be some video interviews of her, like some, I don't know, some Instagram interviews of her, just something that allows people to get to know who she is easier than having to like read through a whole 10 paragraphs of her and really read somebody else's interpretation of her. Like let people see who she is for herself. Like no, you know, kind of editing, no interpretations of her, like, let her show who she is. Um, I think that's really important because we don't really know a lot about her. I mean, I know a lot about her, but that's because I've done research, but others, I feel like they don't really know who she is. So, um, they just, they need to, you know, get her in some more interviews. 
I think another thing that, you know, she needs is to bridge the gap between her and black audiences. So one, she was in a pop girl group that wasn't really marketed to the black community. They were more so focused on intermittent international markets um and not africa you know every other place except for for there um so i think it's going to be really important for her to just build a stronger connection with the black audience and i feel like she tried to do that with waves um but unfortunately urban radio didn't really pick it up um like that um and you know i just feel like black support is really important for up-and-comers like her and lmi they you know have huge urban support they have huge black support so i think that you know it's important for her to build that you know somehow some way she needs to do more interviews with entities like the breakfast club and hot 97 and angie martinez and all those other you know urban radio stations radio one you know all of those you know sub entities under that huge umbrella like she needs to get herself kind of intertwined into those spaces and it seems like her team is trying to do that they had her come to the soul train music awards um last year they also had her perform at this mcdonald's event uh, that you know was done it was it was some sort of event that was for like black change makers and influencers so it was like a private type party and so that kind of put her in in you know in the space with black creatives who could you know help her behind the scenes so that was a good opportunity but of course they need to, need to do some more stuff like that but of course you know they have time when that when it's time for the album to roll out and three, I feel like her social media presence, it could be improved. Um, it's very overly curated. It's kind of like Beyonce's Instagram in that it's a lot of just pretty pictures. It's, you know, beautiful pictures who that are wonderfully edited. But again, there's really no substance. It's hard to really know who she is. Like, you know, so I just feel like she could be using social media a lot better, you know, to showcase who she is, her personality. But I think that she's really just trying to like, harken back into the old times where there was a lot of mystique around artists you didn't really know a lot about them you know you only saw them in interviews you never really saw them outside of that um but she has to understand that she's not in the same environment as the michael jacksons and the janet jackson she's living in a world that is more interconnected and so she has to take advantage of social media and you know be more willing to share who she is with people and you know, and I'm not necessarily saying that she has to do it because I know that she's dealt with a lot of racism on the internet. And so I know that that's probably one of the reasons why she kind of maintains a sort of disconnected social media type platform where she kind of keeps a lot of distance from it. Um, you know, she can have a social media manager run it, but it just needs to be more personable than what it is. Like, show us your personality. Um, show us, you know you you know with your family and not on your ig stories like show us that on your actual page where you know it's not going to disappear in 24 hours like show us that kind of stuff you know and she has a videographer and a photo and a photographer who is wonderful so there's no reason why we can't get some sort of youtube series some instagram ser series where she's showing us her road to stardom show us you know your rehearsal show us the performance that we didn't get to see at the billboard music awards this year like show us everything that you've been doing you know because you know you have a story to tell there's so much unique about her she's you know from new orleans and she you know, dealt with breast cancer with her mom and Hurricane Katrina. Like, there's just so much unique about her, but it's just not being, it's not, you know, being, you don't, it's not being shown in the way that it should. And so let's do it. Like, let's, you know, put her out there. So in terms of weaknesses, I feel like Normani's number one weakness is going to be Beyonce comparisons. So predominantly in the early 2000s Beyonce comparisons were the kiss of death you get compared to Beyonce it's almost guaranteed that your career is not going to be as successful because you know we already had Beyonce so we don't need a Beyonce 2 we don't need a Beyonce clone like there's only one of her so I feel like the Beyonce comparisons are they're dangerous and her team needs to really work hard to combat um, them you know and I would say that 
Normani is getting these Beyonce comparisons, it's not just because she can dance and sing. Because there are other girls who can dance and sing, but they don't get compared to Beyonce. Sierra doesn't get compared to Beyonce. Tiana Taylor doesn't get compared to Beyonce. People are comparing Normani to Beyonce because there are similarities in the way that they perform. I would say predominantly it's in the theatrics. You can tell that this is a girl who studied Beyonce. She is a stan of hers. Like, I can tell that she's watched all the tour DVDs. She's seen the Beyonce experience. She's seen the I am tour because she's giving us a little bit from each of those things I see a lot of Beyonce experience in her um performance at in her performance on the sweetener tour currently I see just a lot of a lot of the dramatics and the theatrics of her performance um and as well as that title performance I just see a lot of Beyonce in that and you know so I think of course the the comparisons are happening because one Beyonce is the standard she is who um, people get compared to and two of course Normani idolizes Beyonce so you know we're, we're seeing the influence for sure and also Be- Normani works with you know some of the people that Beyonce works with like Sean Bankhead and um, I know that she worked with a few people from Beyonce's Parkwood her creative team there um, Normani collaborated with them for I want to say they might have helped her with like a single cover or something along those lines but I saw on her manager snapchat one time them meeting all together so I think she's just closely intertwining herself with people who work heavily with B and it's like that's kind of unescapable because be because the industry is small people work with each other nobody owns a choreography nobody owns dancers nobody owns you know creative directors like people are free to work with whoever they want but I really think that she should just stay away from them as much as she can um and not only to you know distance herself from Beyonce comparisons but also because she's you know such a skilled dancer like she should be working with a choreographer who is you know just maybe a bit more talented and maybe a bit who has more diverse skill set a more diverse dance vocabulary than the one that she's currently working with because she is so skilled and she has had so much practice um over the years I think she should just be working with a choreographer who really just elevates her um more than the one that she's currently working with you know no shade (laughs) um but anyways I feel like the way that Normani's team is handling the Beyonce comparisons it hasn't been great I feel like they're taking a very lazy approach so you know they have her covering all Rihanna songs or saying that she's not the next Normani she's the next Beyonce and I just feel like that's so lazy like you know you have to do something a little bit more than just that like that's you know that's not enough and then I also feel like Normani is really taking this criticism to heart and she's not using it as constructive criticism she's you know really you know allowing it to bring her down she's you know liked a tweet she she's liked a tweet a tweet as well as shared a tweet on her story that kind of talked about black people being like crabs in a in a barrel crabs in a bucket you know um we always bringing each other down and we're always talking badly about each other and I just I don't know I just think things like that are just not productive at all it doesn't help her it doesn't make her look good for her to be berating the black community um when you know not everyone is being mean some people are just being honest people are just commenting on what they they're seeing so why not just take heed to it instead of taking it personally um you know and I'm not trying to police her or tell her what to do but you know it's just not doing her any benefits to you know berate the black community when she already doesn't have strong ties to it like from a musical standpoint um so yeah that's you know kind of what I feel And so I feel like, you know, her team, they really just need to take heed to what people are saying and do whatever they can to, you know, prevent people from saying those things or, you know, really capitalize off those things. I feel like there's, you know, two options. You either take heed and, you know, you go left, you know, instead of right or go right instead of left or, you know, you capitalize off of it and say, yep, you know, I am the next fiance and, you know, see how that goes you know <laughs> so yeah i would say that those are that is normani's weakness um or rather a threat it kind of depends on how you want to see it 
Um, another threat that Normani or another weakness that Normani faces is her team's lack of willingness to put money behind her solo record. So as I said, Waves, you know, wasn't as successful as it could have been. And it's because they didn't push it as hard as they could have. They ended up, you know, kind of damaging the potential of that song to have success you know by focusing more so on the sam smith collaboration you know they kind of put all their eggs in the sam smith basket rather than focusing on normani's own record and and in the end you know you could maybe say that they won because the song is you know it is number eight on the charts but then also you could say that they lost because she didn't she ended up not getting that performance opportunity which was something that was really important to them like they was they were really hoping to capitalize off of that moment or to just take advantage of that moment and they didn't get the chance to do that so I really hope that they use that experience as a learning lesson you know to not put all their eggs in one basket and to really just focus on those songs that are just her because you know when it's just her she's you know her performance slot isn't contingent on anyone else being there because she is you know the main the main individual she's the person who is every who everyone is coming to see and so you know she'll be able to perform rain sleet snow and sickness you know or or you know in health and so i think they should really just be focusing on pushing her out there and they need to invest in her get her everywhere you know have her on you know every single tv opportunity that they can get her every single youtube opportunity that they can get her they just need to really focus on marketing her well um, which I was hoping, you know, she would have better marketing than, you know, some of Rock Nation's other people, um, because she's, you know, not fully Rock Nation. She's, you know, on S10 Entertainment, which is just in partnership with Rock Nation. Um, but her marketing hasn't been that great. So let us pray that when it's time for the album or when it's time for the EP, if they do decide to do an EP, which I think would be really great for them to do, is that would just allow them to just test everything out. Because for a lot of people on her team, this is their first everything. Like Brandon Silverstein, he didn't work. You know, this is his first time being an artist manager, you know, so I, he, he needs to to do some beta testing on things and to see how things go and see how things function and see what he needs to do and what he shouldn't be doing and so I think that an EP is just a good idea it will give her the opportunity to do a trial run so these are my thoughts what do you think what do you think Normani should be doing I'm curious let us know and until next time take care